Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Um, this is about the fourth time I've redone this intro because all the rest sucked. Um, had some time today, um, and I have enough haul and progress that I felt warranted a video. Um, house to myself today, it's pretty quiet. Um, if you can tell, there's a little guest here today. Um, right there, in the bottom corner of your screen, you can see a cat. This cat has not left my side since Tuesday night when I accidentally let it sleep in my room. And now he just won't go away. Usually, I can shut my door, no problem. I can't shut my door because um, because of letting this little turd, his name is Floyd, because of letting this little turd sleep in my room, he now always wants to be in here. And if I shut that door with him on the other side, he will do nothing but paw at it and meow very loudly for about 25 minutes. So I'm taking my chance on just letting him stay there um, because y'all will get very annoyed very quickly if he's on the other side of that door. Just saying. It's not going to be cute. It's going to be annoying. So um, now on any other day, I would be okay just shutting the door and having him on the other side because I know he'll eventually he will go away. But if him pawing and meowing for literally half the video... Um, is likely going to happen. Um, I, it's, I, I can't have that happen. So, he may walk over here at some point. Right now, he's just licking himself. Much like... Never mind. It was going to be a really bad joke, so I'm just not going to go there. Hello, everybody. Um, today is Saturday, May 22nd. And before I forget something, I'm going to write something down on my notes, um, which I have. Um, before I get into everything, I just want to make you all aware that um, for lunch today, I had leftover Casey's Pizza, and I'm currently drinking a Blue Moon. Um, so the odds of burping happening... He just jumped off and went out. He will be back. I guarantee it. Um, and he will be back more annoying. I'm just going to say it. Or maybe he left to give me... Give me space. Um, leftover Casey's Pizza and Blue Moon for lunch. So um, the odds of at least one very loud belch happening in the next however long this video is, is anywhere between 95 to 100%. So... Just want to throw that out there. Um, so, but before I get into all the stitching stuff and all that fun stuff, um, I just want to take a minute because um, I wanted to do this in a video uh, rather than commenting on their video, which I should, you know, I should have, um, or saying something you know, or doing a comment on a post on Instagram or something, because I feel it's more personal this way, so I kind of waited until this moment to do it when I made the video. Um, Y'all know Brenda and Laura from Brenda and the Serial Starter. A um, couple of weeks ago, they put out a video. Um, Brenda's going through some stuff. She did not disclose what, and... Um, that's okay. All we, all they ask for, all Brenda asks for is for all, um, all of us to give them some thoughts and prayers. She's going through some stuff. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to ask what it is because it's not my place. Um, what, just watching Brenda and Laura's friendship in their videos is just so, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, they're a friendship that I I hope all of us can have someday. 
Um, Brenda just seems like one of the sweetest people you could ever meet. So, you know, I'm not a prayer. I'm, you know, I'm not one to pray. Um, but I do send out all the best wishes and good vibes. And if all of you are prayer people or what, however you, however you send, um, you know, healing, healthy, good vibes, um, please do so for Brenda. Um, Because we uh, we all love Brenda, we all love Brenda. She's a wonderful person. Um, I've actually been catching up on their older videos. Um, it's just, I I love those ladies. I don't even know if either of them watch my channel, um, but I know I have uh, quite a reach to people that may not watch their videos. Um, even if you don't know them, don't watch their videos. You know, send send Brenda some good healing vibes. And, um, Laura, who is Mod and Mozart on Instagram, she actually shared, um, a post from another Instagram person. I had to write this down. Um, Instagram is Mistress Page, I believe, and I'll link this below. Um, a couple of days ago, she put out the hashtag for the love of Brenda Sal. Um, and basically, it's just work on a whip or start um, something new in solidarity for Brenda, um, giving her the best uh, well wishes. And I think, I don't know if this was also a, a another hashtag or not. It was in quotes. Uh, stitch what you love, because that's what that's what Brenda uh, would want us all to do is stitch what we love. We love Brenda. We love Laura. Brenda thinking about you very often. Um, just know that we're all here for you. I believe you do know that we're all here for you. Love you dearly. So that's that. Um, I'll link them below, even though I'm pretty sure I don't need to, because all of you, I'm sure, watch Brenda and the Serial Starter. Um, a couple of quick shout outs. Um, one is a new floss tuber, and then two um, sh of my shout outs are of other floss tubers that have not made videos for an extended period of time that had just put out uh, their newest videos here a couple of weeks ago, within the last couple of weeks. Um, the March through May seems to have been the time for um, floss tubers who haven't made a video in quite some time to finally make a video. So that's kind of cool. So the first person I want to uh, shout out just because what really got me about her, and I even commented this on her video, uh, was just the quality of her videos. Um, and a side shout out, um, I was made aware of this person by Betsy Klager. Klager? Klager? Betsy, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. I know you said it before. I still just let, let it process. Um, she actually sent this video to myself or this floss tuber to myself, Ellen Reed of Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour. There will be cross stitch, but it probably won't be an hour. Um, as well as Laura from Brendan's Serial Starter. And that person is Trixie Tricycle. Tricycle. Laura, if you're watching, you know. You know why I'm stressing that. Um, she just started in September um, just stitching. And just the stuff that she has um, accomplished in that time. Uh, yeah, kind of jealous. Um, I mean, huge pieces. Um, and she's really fun. Um, I haven't watched her recent video yet. I know she likes to swear and occasionally burps. Um, so you know she's a friend of mine, just based on that. Next shout, next shout out, um, we'll do this one first. Um, I haven't seen her since... 
the Midwest Cross Stitching Retreat from 2019. Um, and it's been since, don't remember, last April when she put out her last video. Probably longer than that. I honestly don't even know. Uh, but this is Suzette, Primitive Stitcher. Love her dearly. Um, her first video back, I was kind of, whoa, because I'm used to her having long flowing locks of hair. Um, and it was up, it was here. I was like, whoa. So, but it was nice to see her. I was very, ta I was like, I was scrolling through my uh, subscriptions and I saw that she had posted that video and I was like, whoa, I need to stop what I'm doing. And I literally stopped what I'm doing to watch. And then next shout out. And these, if y'all are familiar with me at all, um, I kind of swooned over these ladies my first, hold on, I need to take a sip of beer. Um, swooned over these ladies because I found out shortly after I started my videos that these ladies were local to me. So that's awesome. And I'm talking, of course, of Shine Sparkle Stitch, Holly and Anita. And... It's been since last January of 2020 when they put out their last video, maybe. I'm probably getting that wrong. Um, but then I saw um, Holly, who runs the Shine Sparkle Stitch page on Instagram. Uh, Anita's is Fiber Nook Anita on Instagram. Uh, they posted that they had a new video up, and I'm not exaggerating when I said I canceled plans to watch this video, um, because me and my housemates had plans to watch a movie. And it was getting, you know, it was, what, nine-ish o'clock that night, and saw, saw that they had posted a new video, and I had to immediately say, like, hey, it's getting kind of late. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it through this movie. Um... So instead, I watched Holly and Anita. So go check them out. All of these people will be linked below. And that's what I got for shout outs. So I think we got, got through all of that. So um, let's talk whips. Um, ooh, did I forget one? Hold on. I forgot a whip. Hold on. I can't believe I almost went without showing this. Wait, I think I actually did put it over there. Hold on. This is what happens. Hey, never mind, I didn't have to get up, but at least I, you guys might have got a shot of my, my butt when I got up. So, um, hey, we all win, except for me, because I had to actually move. Um, move up the camera since Floyd's no longer in here. Um, so let's talk quick whips. I will do this one first. Um, I don't, I'm going to be honest and say I don't actually remember if I worked on this since my last video. Um, and I, I'm just, I was too damn lazy to actually go through my last video to find out if I did or not. But this was the 2020 Mid Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat exclusive by Teresa Vanette of Shakespeare's Peddler. Um, I said this in my last video, but, um, you know, I didn't go due to, you know, COVID. Um, but people that were supposed to be there but couldn't be could sign up to still get the retreat exclusive, which I did. And the retreat piece was, oh, that's literally what it's called. Oh, three penny rug projects, but that's included with O. So that's where it is. And this one is, is a combination of two things I said I would never want to do. One is work on 40 count. Um, and the other is stitch in hand with the sewing method. I know you can do the stab and pull with um, stitching in hand. When I think stitching in hand, I 
I think the sewing method. So if I, if you hear me say stitching in hand, it'll always be in reference to the sewing method because if I'm just going to be poking and pulling, I might as well just throw it on a, you know, a hoop or a cue snap. So this is where I am in this. Um, and I know I mentioned this in my last video. I really cannot get it much closer than this because <laughs> My front-facing camera will not focus. No need to leave me tips on how to focus the front-facing camera. I know how to focus my front-facing camera. So let me repeat. My front-facing camera will not focus. Okay. So this is about all as close as I can get. Um... um yeah, I mean, that's all done in hand. Um, sometimes I can't tell if it, because it kind of looks like a little faded. I don't know if that's how the, the floss actually looks or if that's just for me attempting to stitch in hand. I am doing um, one strand because unlike 36 count, which isn't too much different than 40 count, um, one strand does satisfy me on 40 count. I think the coverage is pretty good. So, um, the flosses for this are all, um, Weeks Dye Works, and then there is one Gentle Art, and that one is Wood Rose. I don't know when she plans on releasing this. I'm assuming it'll be, um, you know, a year to the day from the uh, Midwest retreat, so November? Maybe. I don't know. Um, I don't know the actual name of this linen. It's I just know it's a 40 count. I think it's a uh, light mocha, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but there's that. I don't know when. I'll get back to it just because of other things going on. I'll talk about that um, a little bit later. So there's that. Okay. Then my next whip, which I had a page finish on, and once again, I'm to the point where I, I will reveal <laughs> what the sampler is. But right now, I just, because I have to stitch her name in the next video, or in the next, on the next page, which is fine. I just want to get to the point where I feel like I will beat everybody to stitch this. So, that's fine. Um, and this is my mystery sampler that I am working on. Ooh, it looks really nice today. I didn't think it was going to look this good. It's cloudy out, so I, I was kind of nervous. But, wow. Sorry, this is the first time I'm actually seeing it on camera like this. It's it's popping look at all them colors um so this bottom was what i had finished the other night and as you can see we're just coming with all the surprises and stuff and what i was shocked about i think this is supposed to be a deer possibly an alpaca i honestly don't know um but because it's called for one strand of npi silks how this deer was supposed to be stitched was the bottom leg was going to be one color and then the top leg was another color. Well, I'm stitching with two strands of NPI silk, which I feel like there's a mistake in this chart because um, it seems like it was stitched because um, I'm going to have... I don't think I'm going to run out of any of my extra skeins that it calls for, um, even with using two strands, because it calls for one strand over 36 count of NPI silk, but I don't think it's going to happen. But anyway, so I just decided to blend those two colors um, for the deer, the, that ugly butterfly thing. Um, but just the, I, I have to assume the original sampler had these colors on the back because the, that, that turquoise 
is just the amount of evens that I can't. And then we'll show, this is my favorite motif. It took the longest to stitch, but I mean, not including this giant tree in the middle, but um, yeah, so one more look. And I don't know if I have said this before. I know I definitely had it on my Instagram post, but what got me about the sampler and why I wanted to stitch it was um, the fear God part, because I think that just sounds so metal. Hi, Floyd. He came back. I see him. You can kind of see him. He'll probably attempt to get up here at some point, but that's okay. So there is that. I will get back to that eventually. Um, I want to finish it by the end of June, beginning of July, but we'll see. Floyd. No, he's going to make a noise. Listen. <laughs> I think he might just stay there. Okay. Those have been my whips. Now I'm going to combine the next two. I'm going to combine my, my whip or my new starts and my haul because they go hand in hand. So we'll start with um, my first new start. And this was in celebration of me getting fully vaccinated. I wanted to start it on my vaccination date, um, but I had to um, wait for the fabric to come in. And it is the Berlin Woolwork Sampler by The Needles Praise. Um, out of print now, especially now that um, the designer has since passed. I'm sure you can still find it somewhere. The Attic Needlework might have all nine parts. Um, I bought the first five parts on eBay and then somebody gifted to me. Somebody gifted to me um, the last four parts. So, okay, hopefully he's just going to stay there. Okay, cool. Um, so I started part one. I sent uh, my order to my local Need a Workshop, the Stitchery Nook, uh, run by Liz and Sherry. Um, I'm From now on, and I never used to do this, I'm going to be putting their information below. Um, I don't want to brag, but I think I have the best LNS out there. Um, very sweet ladies, very helpful. Um, they'll get you what you want, just saying. Um, they custom frame too, my sampler, got that frame there. Yeah, and I'll tell you how much they care about you. So I asked to kit up the first four parts um, and I'm doing it on 24 count soft ivory Congress cloth. Um, well, not only did she pull all of the floss for the first four parts, she actually bagged each part individually, which I did not ask her to do, uh, but God bless them for it. So, and I am using the DMC because I sure as hell was not going to use the needlepoint silk because that would have cost me $1,200. So, <laughs> yeah. And then it also calls for Appleton wool. So I don't know what that is, but that sounds interesting. So um, each motif is explained um, in detail in the parts. Um, a lot of the motifs are tent stitched and it says you can use two or three strands. I, I'm using two strands of DMC for those parts just because... Um, I do the loop start, so. Um, so let me show you where I got it on my scroll rods. And I know in my last video I said when I started I was going to hopefully on average do one motif a day. There's 106 motifs. Uh, we're way past that. So um, here we go. This is on the, my Omenic frame. If you ever, if you want an ex, if you want a bar of chocolate, uh, buy directly from uh, the Omenic factory for your quantum frame. 
But here we go. Motifs one and two are done. This one, motif number one was fun as heck to do. That is all satin stitch. Um, I'm not used to doing satin stitch like that. So you know how you can see charted satin stitches and stuff, how they give you examples on how to do them. I'm not kind of used to looking at graphs that way. I, I don't feel like pulling it out, but, um, so it took me a lot of thinking to do, um, that one. Um, but I think it turned out great. I wish I maybe would have used one extra strand of DMC because, um, coverage could be a little bit better, but I mean, it is what it is. And then motif number two here, um, that is all tent stitch. Um, it's a pain in the ass when you're only doing tent stitch to try to, um, let me back up. I've never tent stitched anything on Congress cloth before. So to try to run my needle under just one go of thread um, on over one on 24 count Congress cloth, that's a pain in the ass. Um, so, and I figured out how to alleviate this. I'm gonna try that whenever I start the next motif. Um, and I kind of drew a diagram, excuse me, Floyd. I thought it was gonna make a noise. So most half tent stitch, and I drew a diagram. Yeah, I went the extra mile. You know, you go you go over your thing and then you just go down the hole, go up, and then just go straight down. And there's not a whole lot of area in there to try to run your needle under. So what I think I'm going to start doing with these tent stitches is now doing what I think they call continental, um, uh, continental tent stitch where you stitch this way, then you go diagonally to the top, come back down, go diagonally, come back down the front, and you're sort of doing this like woo motion rather than this zigzag you know what I mean I hope that made sense and I by doing that you know I will have some more surface area more thread length to try to weave my needle under that's a thought process I'm going to try to do um will I remember it by the time I actually get back to it probably not probably not so that was one new start. And now the next new start I had, and then this will get into my fiber works haul. So let me just show you what my new start is. Um, and I kinda, Mr. Floyd kind of stepped on it, so it's a little bit loose. But um, I went to fiber works the other day, the other day, a week ago, um, with my best friend that I haven't seen in over a year. We're both fully vaccinated and we decided we needed to see each other because neither of us have left the house. <laughs> Excuse me. It happened. There it is. 100%. Okay. Um, and we just, we had a great time. It was a great time to finally see somebody who wasn't the people I live with or the cats. Um, we went out to eat for lunch. We sat on a patio. We found the furthest corner seat to sit at, which was awesome. And this is just a side note, but please tell me if this is happening in any of your guys' restaurants. And I don't know if it's due to the pandemic or whatever, but have the size of your guys' drinks gotten larger? There's another cat in here. And the only reason I ask is because I... I got a jumbo margarita, and it usually I'm used to, like, the goblet-looking jumbo marg size. They brought out, like, a, a pint glass. And then when I asked, because I'm an alcoholic, so I had a, I'm not actually an alcoholic. Sorry, that's not funny. I apologize. Knock on wood. Um, 
I uh, wanted the next size smaller because I do love my alcohol. And it was still like a 12 ounce glass. And I know that um, alcohol portions were not that large prior to the pandemic. And then we go to a local bar um, later that day and I didn't buy a Moscow Mule, but the people that way is away had a Moscow Mule. And it wasn't the tiny Moscow Mule copper mugs anymore. They were like, like barrels, Moscow Mule copper barrels. And like, I'm not the only one, right? Has, is this happening elsewhere? Or have you noticed the size of alcohol changing? Are they trying to make up for what was lost? But the weird thing is they weren't that expensive. Maybe they have an abundance of alcohols. I don't know. Anyway, so involved in that day's fun, um, we went to another local needle workshop. I'm very fortunate to have two within 50 miles of each other. Um, and this one is called Fiberworks, and that is located in Waverly, Iowa. Um, what I love about Fiberworks is that they're a small shop, but holy hell, they got a lot. Um, and it's a lot of stuff that is super hard to find. Um, don't ask me if they have Tiger Lily by Nora Corbett. They don't. Don't ask me if they've got, well, I mean... No, they don't. So, it ends up being stuff that I don't know is hard to find until after I buy it, most of the time. Um, but lots of stuff that you've, I've never seen before. Um, so I go in there, and for the first time in my life, I bought just Nan patterns. Um... What fueled this is, in a very short amount of time, I watched not only Catching Up with Cross Stitch with Luda, who I love. If Luda, if you're watching, I love you dearly. Um, who does a lot of just Nan stuff. But also, and I suggest y'all go follow her on Instagram. My girl Heather, Heather McLean4, I think is her Instagram handle. She, uh, she, I've been trying to ask her to do floss tube videos. She still tells me no, because what she does is she does about 14, 15 minute videos on her Instagram of her just stitching in hand. And most of them are just Nan patterns. So, yeah. So anyway, what I, the two just Nan patterns that I picked up here, and that's not, this is not just my haul, um, not the only part of my haul, but, um, if I can get it, Jesus, okay, um, this one, now, this one, I actually have wanted for a while, and I've seen it on eBay before, not for, like, terribly expensive pricing, but, you know, it's, um, the Peacock Cipher, which I'm just here for all the blue, um, it does come with its own little, I'm here for the beads, it comes with the bead pack, and its own special peacock charm, which as you can tell, the camera's not focusing so you can see it, so that's okay. Um, did not kit this one up, but that's okay. I don't want to start it right away. And reasonable price, very reasonable price. I'm covering it up because I don't want to, um, you know, anyway. Um, so initially, this was going to be the only Just Nan pattern I ever wanted to stitch. And this is thinking back, you know, however long ago. Um, but after watching Heather and Luda's videos, you know, I've been like really wanting to get Just Nan stuff. Mainly because a lot of their stuff is like hard to find and very expensive on eBay. And you know me about being able to find killer deals on stuff that is hard to find um, and just being able to find them. Well. One of those things um, that I almost bought on eBay, which I was able to find at Fiberworks, was the octagonal peacock. And um, it gives you a front, it gives you um, the chart for the front if you just want to frame it this way. But if you want to make it a pocketbook, 
They also give you a back chart. Um, and this one did come with the charms and the beads. Um, it's a little out of focus. It's not going to focus. Don't give me tips on how to focus. My camera will not focus. Um, but it came with everything. I bought this for, well, you probably saw the price by now, um, about $15. You want to know how, how much I almost spent on this on eBay about three weeks ago? I almost bought this for $65 on eBay. Found it at Fiberworks for $15. Um, the only reason I didn't buy it at that time uh, was because I forgot about it and then the posting ended on eBay. So... Somebody was watching out for me. It was probably Floyd. Right, Floyd? Yeah, he don't care. Um, so, bought this, and then I kitted this one. I, I immediately placed a one, two, three stitch order. Um, I The called for fabric that they show in here is like, what did they say? Um, a 28 count Graziano Natural or Graziano Savannah Rose which the Savannah Rose is a pinkish color, obviously. And then, but with the blues and the greens and stuff, I just, I don't like how it looks on the natural or the, the Savannah Rose just based on the cover. So what I ended up getting, and I already threw out the tag. I don't know where my receipt, I probably already threw out the receipt too. So I don't, I don't it's a, um, oh, actually, hold on. My computer's in front of me. Um, you can just stare at this for a while. Um, let's go to trash. In, in, in trash. One, two, three, stitch. Oh, mm. Hold on. We're going to find it together. Mm. See, what sucks is... I want to be able to tell you what it is. It's a 20, what if I go to one, two, three stitch? Will it tell me, hold on, I'm sitting in front of my computer. Um, menu, order history, here we go. What did I buy? 28 count country French blue linen. It's looking a little gray right now, but uh, it does have a nice smoky blue color, um, you know, when you have it in front of you. Um, I'm sorry, it's not gonna focus, but. Um, this is how far I've gotten in two days. Um, I will say if you're hesitant to ever start a Chatelaine, uh, Just Nans are probably a good, um, tester because they've got a lot of the same mandala-esque, you know, look to them and the specialty stitches. Um, this is my first time doing, what did they call it? They called it a double cross eyelet, which I know it's not gonna focus, but to me, and I have it on my Instagram, it looks like a window. Um, and then also a backstitch Rhodes stitch, which just looks like a bundle of floss because nothing will focus. Um, but yeah, so this is two days progress. Had a perfect peacock needle minder for it. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to be working on this. Um, as you can see, it's in a hoop. This is the first time I've used a, ho a hoop since I lived in the apartments, which has been four years now. Um, and I decided to put it in a hoop because I, I did not want to load it into a Q-snap because I've been finding lately working in a Q-snap on my... Lowry, I just haven't felt like pulling it towards me. I kind of, I just want to kind of just slump down like my lazy self and just have my crap in front of me with, you know. Now, can't you do that with a Q-snap? You sure can. But this thing, it, you know, it's light. It's light. Okay, I didn't lose the needle. Um, it's very light. Um, and it's nice. And I just have the pattern on my lap. I'm like, oh, yes. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Julie, Kansas City girl in Colorado world, please tell me. Oh, beautiful. Love it. 
So that's how I am. Um, so yeah, this is definitely going to be my focus piece for a, a little bit. Um, until I at least finish, you know, the actual front. Um, now, when it gets to the point where I need to add the beading and stuff, the fabric is big enough that it will fit in a... Um, 11, 11, 11 by 11 Q snap, just so I can do all the beading and then attach the charm. So one more look for you. It's coming along great. I'm loving it. It's fast. Like I said, that's only two days work, which may not seem like a lot, but come on. Um, so yeah, that's been a whole, uh, that's been a fun adventure. So, and I'm doing it in the DMC. I think it also has anchor for conversion. So um, there's that. And then a couple of other things that I picked up at Fiberworks, um, was this lovely sampler. I've never heard, I feel like I, I feel I, like I'm almost certain I've seen this sampler before, but I've never heard of the designer or anything like that before. Um, this is from the Marking Sampler, because it's spelled S-A-M-P-L-A-R. Um, and it's Elizabeth Haxton, 1866, a Scottish sampler. Um, not going to take it out of the bag. There we go. No glare. But look at how fun that looks. That looks cute. Um, my friend that I went with, she actually found this and handed it to me. I'm like, okay, yeah. And I think the reason why I'm, I told her, okay, yeah, I'll do that, is because there's no house in this sampler. <laughs> um, and I'm just, you know, I'm not... Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a house stitcher. I've said that before. So somebody told me I, I need to hold things up longer. Sorry, I'm still getting back in the swing of floss too. This is only my third one since I've been back. So, um, so yeah, um, each band um, is a different stitch. Um, I think the top one is normal cross stitch. It's not going to focus. But then this row is eyelets, and I think. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of different stuff. I looked at the chart, I'm gonna be honest, it's a little confusing, but um, don't know when I'm gonna get to it. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's just a bunch of different colors going on. I don't know if the camera picks up, but like all the the letters are a different color. There's a lot of bright reds. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then this one, I I have been, it's been on my eBay to order list for a while. Um, and then we saw it at Fiberworks and I'm just like, I'm gonna get it now. And it's the Oh Holy Night Nativity from the Stony Creek collection. I mean, the amount of evens. Can you? I sure as hell can't. Not with that many evens going on. I mean, we got baby Jesus and everything going on. And I think this one is an ice blue linen. What was the what was the called for fab? Blue wing Joblin. That's a you can't find that anymore. Although I do have a piece of 28 blue count that would fit this on there. Not blue count, blue wing, 28 count that would fit that on there. However, whenever I get back to Sleeping Beauty, that's when I'm gonna put on that 28 count blue wing. So, but doesn't it look stunning? I mean, the evens. I'll do it eventually. I'm telling you, I'm gonna win Publisher's Clearinghouse. Then I'm gonna be able to stitch all the things with stitch all the things. Um, and then, uh, I, I'm never gonna stitch this because it's, it's like the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, but, Considering the day that we went and it's tax season, um, I picked up this Twisted Threads um, piece called All the Money IRS. It's, you can't see it, but it, this woman talking to an IRS agent and the caption says, and what did you do with all the money I gave you last year? Isn't that funny? That's funny. It's funny as hell. I'm never going to stitch it. I just picked it up because it's tax season. And um, I, I had a really good laugh in the... <laughs> had a really good laugh in the shop. So. So, yeah. 
there's that. And then that was all I picked up from uh, Fiberworks. Um, I did intend on picking up fabric there, but I didn't. I could have looked for fabric for the, and just kitted up the octagonal peacock there, but I was not thinking about that, so I didn't. Um, but the other piece of haul that came in, and I put away the the thread pack, so I'm not going to get that out, but I always order my new mirrors from Leslie LaFleur from Under the Sea Fabrics, and this is the new one, um, Ophelia, and it's designed 175. Isn't that just stunning? This, I... I really, really like this one. Not just because it's beautiful, I mean, because Avi, but it's very reminiscent of very early Mirabilia designs. Lots of big space, the large dresses. I mean, I, my mind goes to Mother's Arms and um, the Dreamer. A very this one's very reminiscent of those um larger pieces from the very early Mirabilia days. So love that. It only calls for two Karen Water Lilies, so I just got the thread pack for those. Um and I am loving that Nora is starting to use the new 35 DMC colors in her design. So so there is that. Next piece of haul. Uh, this isn't even a haul. Well, some of it is. Um, as I mentioned in my last video, somebody tell me how to build up my fabric stash. Well, got lots of great suggestions. Was that my last video or was that the video before? It was my last one. I, I scored pretty well on stash unload and then I got gifted a bunch of fabric from uh, one of my friends. So let's go through it. This pack was just a pack of random fabrics, different sizes, different counts. Most of them aren't marked, so I don't know. Um, it was just $20 for everything. Here you go. So here's this cute little thing. It's an 8x8 piece of something. It's a nice blue, um, which would have been fine for that peacock sampler, but I, like, I'm stitching both the front and the back um, for the, not the peacock sampler octagonal peacock one um but the length of both on 28 count is um 18 and a half to nine inches and this does look like this looks like a 32 count but and the reason i chose a 28 count for that is because the charm it comes with the charm that is supposed to fit on a 28 count so and then here is a 28 count natural it says wool something on there. It's a 17 by 15. It's a lovely natural, but it's a 28 count. So I don't see myself putting like a sampler or anything on here. Um, and then here's a 14 by 14 piece of something. Um, it looks like a 28 count again. And then a 15 by 18 of whatever the hell this is. It looks it looks like a raw linen, I think. Um, definitely looks 28 count, but this is nice. Um, um, very big. Um, I don't, once again, I have no idea what I'm going to put on any of these because I'm going to be honest, a lot of these fabric cuts are barely big enough to fit anything I stitch. So this one looks like a 36 count. Um, and it's a 14 by 18 piece of something. It looks like a 36 count. Just looking at it in front of my face, it looks like a 36. And then, I, I don't know what the hell this is, um, but it's an 11 by 13 piece of something. And you can tell they're all different types of linen, too, just because of how they feel and how the, the fibers look and everything. Um, but this looks like almost like a light mushroom linen, if you will. And then this last, this is a 13 by 16 beige, almost khaki looking piece of fabric. Again, this doesn't even look like it's an even weave. I mean, and 
it looks 28 count, but like you can just tell by looking at it that it seems skinnier one way. Um, so that was that. I all these look like 28 count. I don't really stitch a whole lot of stuff on 28 count, but I'm sure I'll find some sort of use for these at some point. I'm sure. And then, so that was that. That was Stash Unload. And sh this seller will put off once in a while, or put up once in a while, um, bundles of fabric cuts like this for $20. I chose this one specifically just because it looked like it had a good variety of things that I may or may not use at one point. Um, sometimes people will put fabric lots and they've got like weird greenish or like weird red colors that I would never use. So I would feel like, uh, yeah, so there we go. And then my girl Hillary, who is Rustic Threads on Instagram, she gifted me a bunch of fabric. And um, um, first she actually sent me a couple of flosses that she dyed herself and they look like the beautiful Christmas colors. They are showing up much lighter than what they actually are. They're actually a very, um, actually this one's more of a magenta color. You can't tell on the camera because it looks like it's bright red on your, on your guys, but there is, a, it's a lovely variegation of like, uh, a pink and red and it's just it's it's beautiful and then it's not mm, yeah no it's showing up brighter on the camera but this one is more like a pine green looking floss um so i will definitely at some point find some sort of use for those um but let's take a look at what she sent me and some of these i think are marked some are not some came with pegs um, and as you can tell, they kind of fell off. This one says 32 count raw and 32 count ivory. I don't, I, they kind of, they weren't like stuck to the fabric. So it's going to be a shot in the dark of what they actually are. Um, this one looks like a 32 count natural. Um, it's a nice long piece, which I think if like, that's a nice long piece. Well, we'll figure something out for that one. I didn't want to undo that, but that's okay. Because now I don't know how I'm going to put it back in the bag. That's okay. And then, this one is lovely. Um, this one's another 32, it's a 32 count. And it's, it's a nice piece. I mean, that's a nice piece. That, so, once again, it's showing colors... Uh, the darker colors of the modeling much more prominent on the camera than what it actually is in person. In person, it's a very subtle, neutral, dyed color. Um, I want to figure out what the actual count of this is and the size of the fabric because I could see putting a very nice um, sampler on this piece um, at some point, so... I really, that's probably my favorite piece out of all she sent because it's got, it's not an overwhelming model, modeling to it. Um, so yeah. And then this looks like a 32 count. This must, this has to be the 32 count ivory. Um, it's very soft. Um, this would, a good Nora would fit on there. And then this, this fabric is a nicely modeled something. I don't know what it is. Uh, Hillary, if you're watching, let me know what this is. <coughs> oh, got to tickle my throat. Hold on. I need a sip of beer. Um, but I like this. I think a nice smaller sampler would look good on this. For me, though, um, I don't think I would ever stitch a sampler on a, on a linen this dark. Um, that's just my own personal preference. Um, but the modeling on this is very nice. Uh, it's showing up pretty true to color on the camera, which is nice. Um, it does look like 32 count. Um, if I measure it, maybe a mirror would fit on there. Although I don't know what mirror would look good on this. But I definitely have plans now that I've got all the stash. And then finally, this one. Maybe this is the ivory. Hold on. Hold on. What was the other one? 
No, okay. Th maybe this one's the ivory. I don't know. But this is this looks like a 32, almost 28 count. I can't tell if there's mu I don't and I don't know if it's just because I got bad lighting. I can't tell if there's modeling on this or not. No. Because it almost looks oh wait, hold on. It's a 20. 28 count very pale purple only reason i know that is because th this tag was actually folded in the fabric and didn't fall out because i was looking i was like it kind of looks like it's got some color to it so 28 count very pale purple so yeah oh yeah oh yes so okay it's not showing up on the camera very well but um i will definitely figure something out to put on this um because, yeah, this is a very nice, because when you bunch it up and you look at it through, um, can you, you can kind of see the purple there. But um, and the light shining through and everything, the purple is coming through. So I like that. So that is a 28 count. So, so that was all the pieces in there. Once again, thank you, Hillary. Go follow her on Instagram. She is Rustic Threads. Uh, and then, oh. Last piece of haul slash plans. Y'all, y'all know me. Y'all follow me on Instagram. I am desperately wanting to start this Alice in Wonderland style from Owl Forest Embroidery. But why haven't I started it? It's because my, especially, especially, it, as you can tell, I'm very emotional. I can't even find the words. My, Special hand-dyed threads directly from Owl Forest Embroidery dyed specifically, well, not dyed specifically, but specifically for the sal. I'm not showing up yet. and it, I know it's going to be a while. I ordered them almost a month ago to the day. And I got lucky because... I ordered the 40 count pack. I'm not stitching on 40 count. Um, but I noticed the difference between the 40 count pack to stitch with one strand over two and the 36 count pack to stitch with two threads over two. The difference between those two packs was the 36 count two over two needed two extra skeins of one color. So my ass bought the 40 count pack and then bought two extra skeins of the other color. So I'm just patiently waiting for that to come in because part three was released and I'm hoping everything shows up because I want to get caught up because I messaged, or Abby Bella Stitch messaged me and she's like, are you, are you, or... She messaged me something, and I don't remember what it was. Oh, it's not a race. She mes messaged me something like that. I'm like, but, but if it gets to be too far ahead, if it's like part seven by the time I get everything, I'm not going to want to stitch it anymore because I want to be caught up with everyone. But then the other dilemma was, what fabric do I use? I don't want to use the natural vintage mocha that they called for. I thought about maybe stitching it on a pink, but then I was worried about certain colors not showing up. And I'm like, I want something, because I'm, I want to do 36 count. I want something a little bit blue, just a little bit blue, but I don't want it to be a solid blue. I want there to be some modeling in there. I'm not well-versed in... Um, Di different fabric dyes by different fabric dyes. I don't know. I don't just, I don't know. Um, so I had to message my girl, Michelle Bendy. I'm like, girl, help me help myself. I don't know fabrics. Here's what I'm looking for. Give me some suggestions. And she suggested 36 count, picture this plus... I don't remember, but it was a nice grayish blue modeling. And I'm like, okay, I can maybe get behind this. I don't know where to find it. <laughs> so I messaged 
Liz from the Stitchery Nook. And I'm like, hey, I want to stitch this. Here's the fabric I'm looking for. Do you have it? And by the sheer grace of Jesus, they had the 36 count of that picture of this plus in stock at the Stitchery Nook. One problem was not big enough. So I'm like, Liz, this is along the lines of what I want to stitch on. Is there anything else that you guys have in stock that would look like this? And she said, yes. And she pulled out and I'm kind of glad. I'm glad because I love their fabrics. I'm stitching my Scarlet House sampler on there. That's not it. Um, it is 36 count Luna by color and cotton. And um, it's not showing up on camera very well at all. Trust me when I say it's a very lovely it looks kind of gray. No, it's not gray. It's a, if I hold it close to myself like this, you kind of, you can kind of see what it actually looks like. It's a very, very light baby blue, very, just this, the soup soul of modeling going on in there. And I'm like, yes, give it to me, Liz. I want it all. So not only did she specially cut the one piece to fit the salon, but I got the rest of the fat half that it was cut from. Cause I didn't want to just leave awkward cut pieces with her. I'm like, give them to me, Liz. So I bought that and I'm ready to go whenever that floss arrives. Uncle Kyle's getting very antsy to start that. So. Plans from here to start this when the floss arrives. I'm going to continue working on my octagonal peacock. My sampler is going away for a little bit because I also have a model stitch that I'm stitching. And this mess of a cabinet going on here. This top, this top thing in that Q snap, that is what I'm model stitching. Can you guess the designer just by looking at the Q-snap and the little piece of fabric? You probably can't. So those are the plans. Those are the plans. That's all. I, I also plan on drinking copious amounts of alcohol. I'm tired now. That's all I got. We went an hour, fam. I actually thought it was, I didn't think we were gonna go this long. That's what she said. Um, but I'm glad y'all stuck with me. Floyd is starting to walk on stuff. Let's see. If, hold on. We'll see if he says goodbye. Isn't he a beautiful? He's a beautiful cat. I hate cats, but I think Floyd. Yeah, this is his face. This is just his face. So good cat. Yeah. Don't worry about him. He just makes those noises. I don't, we, I have no idea why. <laughs> no idea why. Um, but that's it, fam. And he's going to start walking on shit again. Floyd. Okay, he's just going to lay down. Family, thank you so much for spending time with me today. I hope I didn't have anything else on my notes. I kind of put away my notes. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Um, I have bad news. Let's start with the good news. And I didn't acknowledge this on my last video. Um, but after my return video from my year-long hiatus, I passed 3,000 subs, which thank you to everyone for the love and support. I'm glad you've returned. Uh, spread the word. Please spread the word of my channel, because I'm starting to get back into videos. Um... So please give me all of the shout outs. And if you shout me out or you hear somebody that did shout me out, let me know so I can go thank them personally. Be like, hey fam, thanks. Um, am I doing anything for my 3,000 sub 
milestone. That's a resounding no. And here's why. Um, I love I love the idea of giveaways. I I have done giveaways in the past. I just they're a lot of work anymore. Um, they just I don't I don't go to the post office to drop things off to be sent out. I just I don't. To show my appreciation for all of you, if you want me to take my shirt off, I'll do it. Um, maybe if I hit 5,000 subs, I will do a giveaway. That is the next milestone. Because I did one for my 1,000, 1,500, and 2,000 subs. Um, I did giveaways for those. Um, I told myself if I ever reached 3,000, I would do a giveaway. But then I took a year-long hiatus. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I was I was at 2,900 and something for literally that entire year. Um, I was almost at 3,000 for an entire year. So, um, yeah, so giveaways aren't going to be a thing un unless I reach 5,000. So if you all want to see me give away something, spread me like... Um, spread me like a bad case of, of herpes or something. I don't know. Um, and we'll, 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 we'll do something for that. Um, so that's the good news. Um, bad news is, and a lot of you people are probably going to find out from this video, because I have not mentioned it at any other point outside of, um, just a couple of others. Um, I'm not going to StitchCon this year. Um, it's on one hand breaks my heart. Um, because a lot of people I want to see again, I have not seen in almost two years. Um, a lot of people I want to meet are going to be there. I There's a handful of reasons why I'm not going. Um, when I message Stephanie, I'm not going to say what the reasons are because it's, it's a little bit, it's personal. They know why I'm not coming, um, and I think that's all that really matters. Um, there's just a lot of factors, not all of them bad factors by any means, for why I'm not going. There's just a lot of factors of why I finally decided I needed to cancel. Um, so hopefully... Sorry, Floyd keeps looking back there as if there's somebody in the house, which kind of perks up my anxiety. Um, there's just a handful of reasons. Um... But I'll be there in spirit. I'm always there in spirit. Um, I'll be drinking wine and spirits while people are there. So um, it all evens out. I'll see them all eventually. Maybe StitchCon 2022. Um, so I know that's going to break a lot of hearts. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah. So. That's that. Um... I hope everybody stays safe, um, and as well, um, I don't know how to end this video, and if you are a longtime subscriber, I've said that at many endings of my videos, don't know how to end it, um, I'm still trying to think, because this one did run about 25 minutes longer than I thought it would. So I was thinking about tacking something on the end, but here we are almost an hour 15 in. So I'm not going to tack on something else. I do want to start, because I have been stitching in hand, I do want to start doing um, stitching in hand videos um, and posting those Instagram, just so in my absences um, from here anyway, uh, people can just keep up on what I'm stitching on. Um, so that was a plan was to, if my video ran a little bit shorter to add like a stitch with me video at the end, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. Um, I appreciate everyone's comments on how to, uh, build up a fabric stash that helped a lot. Um, everybody, the resounding 90% was to join fabric on the month clubs. I'll tell you what. 
Um, I can't do that. I... <laughs> I can't join Fabric of the Month clubs. I, I'm sorry. I can't. I just can't. I, and I know that there are Fabric of the Month clubs that do um, natural linens because that's really more in line with what, just with the things that I stitch. Um, I don't want heavily modeled stuff or, or with weird colors and stuff. I did get a lot of um, suggestions for uh, Fabric of the Month clubs that do offer those types of services. Um, but just looking at the prices of some things, uh, some of the subscriptions, it's just, I can't justify doing that to get one piece of fabric a month. So, um, but, you know, by the grace of my friend Hillary and just my sheer luck of stash unloading to find that floss pack, or floss pack, um, fabric pack you know I've got some good fabric now I still want to I want to build my fabric stash and I know to do that I gotta spend some money that's fine um I hope to eventually go to the stitchery nook because at the stitchery nook they've got a big like I don't remember if it's a tub or just a wooden table with a divot cut in. I honestly don't remember. That's how long it's been since I've been at the Citri Nook. Um, of just random size cuts of random fabrics in like a toss bag. So that's an idea that I've got in mind for the next time I go to the Citri Nook to hopefully see all my friends. I miss my Citri friends. I still fondly think of the last time I was in the Citri Nook um, with with Anita and Farm Girl and Shannon. Oh, shout out, Shannon Bromo, the soda stitcher. I knew I was forgetting somebody. I knew I was forgetting somebody. Um, well, uh, I'll tag her down below too. Okay, go watch her. She just put out her first two videos, love her dearly. Um, and then um, ho hopefully the next time we all get together It'll be all the same people, as well as Carla, Rolodex Stitcher, who now lives in my great state. And I heavily put on the sarcasm on the word great, just based on things. Um, who has since moved to the great state of Iowa. Hopefully she will be able to join us there. Um... But yeah, I think that's it. Um, so my question for the day, if you guys have stuck with me this far, and I don't want to make it question of the day because I'm not going to do a video tomorrow. Uh, but my question for this video is, um, what, what would be a good one? Because I really want to know. Are there any types of cross-stitch you, for just whatever reason, cannot get into? My example. Never have I ever, and never have I found any Halloween design that has ever made me go, I want to stitch that. Um, and it's not even that I dislike Halloween. There is something about... Halloween stitching that I cannot get into. And I don't know why. Because a lot of it's beautiful. A lot of it's great. I've just never been like, ooh, I want to stitch that sometime. It's never happened. Not, you will, if you can tell, I've got, look, that is all my cross stitch stuff in these three cabinet drawer things. Not a single, I shouldn't say that, there may be one or two in there that were gifted to me, but outside of maybe the one or two, you will not find a single Halloween-themed cross-stitch pattern in all those totes. It's just not going to happen. I, I might have a Nora Witch. Some things kind of tilt on the side of... I don't want to say Halloween. 
maybe maybe more darker creepy stuff maybe no i don't even have that i don't i don't even know what i'm talking about anymore i don't have halloween stuff i've never gotten into halloween themed stuff it's just i don't it, and i don't know why it's not like i said it's not because anything any of it's ugly it just doesn't tickle my fancy could that change it sure as hell can. You want to know why? I told myself last year, a couple of years ago, I never really wanted to stitch a sampler. I never really want to stitch just Dan charts. And it's not because that they were ugly. It's because I didn't want to stitch them. But here I am, stitching a just Nan. My first professionally framed piece was a sampler. Uh, so, I mean, maybe down the line my mind will change. Um, I don't feel like it will because I've stitched this long and have still don't care for Halloween stitching. So what are some ha or Halloween, what are some cross stitching stuff that you just don't, you don't care for? And you don't have to, let's not play down on anybody. I'm not playing down on anybody who stitches Halloween stuff. Cause like, like I literally have said a million times already, it's not because I think any of that's ugly or whatever. It just does not tickle, it does not tickle my fancy. There's no fancy tickling happening. So, let me know. What are some stuff you don't really care for stitching? It'll be a fun discussion. I would love to hear it. Maybe, maybe, maybe throw me a ballpark and say, hey, you don't like actually doing cross stitches, so you actually just do your whole thing in French knots, which would, props to you if you do that. I don't know why you would want to do that, but God bless you. Um, anyway, I've already rambled about 10 minutes longer than I wanted to. So, I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend. It is, just to wrap this up, May 22nd. It's a Saturday. I may put this out tomorrow morning, just so people have something to watch when they have their coffee. Um, but we'll see. I'm also very sad to know, and the Stitch Mania page is going away. Um, I've never participated in Mania. I never intended to. Um, but that was the page, that's the page that I, helped me get my channel going and where I usually post when I have a new video. And I don't have that outlet anymore, so. Let's spread the word of Kyle. Um, but you can find me on Instagram. It's just my name. Um, send me a message if you got questions. Comment questions. I'll be happy to answer them. And yeah. So, per usual, I won't show Floyd. He's sleeping now. Again. Um, I hope everybody has a great day. Keep being amazing. Let those fucks fly, and please say no to acid. Please say no to acid. Ooh, that's another question. I mean, I've been kind of growing tired of my uh, outro. What uh, should I keep? Should I keep the fucks part going? Uh, Cause I don't know. I'm kind of leaning away. As you can tell, I didn't really, I haven't really, I didn't really swear a lot. The, <laughs> these videos coming back. It's because, like, I don't know. I don't know. I swear a lot in person, but I just, I've been kind of getting away from swearing lately. On video, anyway. Because trust me, I, I have a sailor mouth, let's be real. So, if you have suggestions on how what outro I should do, let me know. I could keep that. I could keep it. If you guys tell me to keep it, I'll keep it. But Because I know Brenda, and Brenda from um, Handwork Maniac. I know she doesn't care for the swearing. So I always think about her. Her and Deb Bernheisel. I always think about when I accidentally swear or swear on purpose. I'm like, oh gosh, they're probably watching. I'm sorry. And maybe that's because, maybe that's why some people don't watch, because I swear too much. Should I take away the swearing? I don't know. I don't know. I love everybody. 
I'm gonna go eat chocolate now. Okay, bye.